Um, ABC similar to PQ or on the line of QP, so and so forth. Okay, so um, the strategy is to write down the unknown, the unknown over here. Which is QP. So part one, QP. And then we search for the corresponding size to QP. QP. So second letter to the first letter, BA. And we have to choose another pair of sides which we already have the length of. Okay? So um, in my QP, referring to the small triangle, found in a small triangle over here. So I must, in my numerator, also put in the length, the side that belongs to a small triangle. And look, there is only one option, which is PR. No other choice. So let's put on PR. And we find the corresponding side, PR with AC over AC. Now, I expect, I haven't looked at it closely yet, but I expect that the, the other two denominators and the other numerators, we have the values. So let me verify right now. QP over BA. Okay, BA, I have it as 12. PR, which is 4, over AC, which is 6. So as expected. So in this case, QP will therefore be 12 times of 4 over 6 to give us 8 cm. Okay, so this is 8 cm. This way of um, finding the value, the length is, um, I, I think it is better rather than trying to identify which are the corresponding sides based on the um, diagrams. Because it may not be drawn to scale, that's one thing. Uh, the other is that you may be confused over whether there's a reflection, there's a rotation, whether the sides change or not. So now let's move on to part two. We want to find um, QR. QR. Likewise, go back to the name, QR, BC, over BC. And now, you have two options. We are trying to find QR. You have two options for the small triangle. You, have, you can use either the 8cm or the 4cm. But which is a better choice? Is it a QP or PR? Which is a better choice? We need to know how to make these kind of decisions. Huh? Both are all right, but there is a better choice, which is PR. Why? Because the value is given to us. It is definitely correct. Whereas if you were to use a value that you calculated in the previous part, you cannot be, uh, you, you might have made a careless mistake before that, then your subsequent part two might be wrong also. So if given a choice like this, choose the value that is confirmed correct, which is the one that is provided for. So here we have, again, PR, and you will see that it's going to be the same over here, over AC. Then let's fill in the blanks. Q R B C. Okay, what is B C? Nine. And we have the same ratio on the right hand side. So now Q R will be um, nine times of four over six. Two and three, three times two, six m. Yep, correct. So QR 6 cm. So I, I think it's a good habit that when you have the values, you immediately put it down in the diagram. So that you know that subsequently, if there's a part 4, part 5, where, there is, where you have no choice but to use an answer from the previous part, you have it in the diagram for you already. And now finally for part 3. To find angle PQR, okay, Let's go back to the, uh, to the name, PQR. So it is corresponding to angle ABC, equals to angle ABC. Let's go back to our angle ABC. ABC, it is given to be 25 degrees. That's all. For practice four. Any questions? OK, then now practice number five. WXYZ, similar to DEFG, OK. Determine the value of angle GDE. Part A, angle GDE. Instead of looking at the diagram, where is my GDE? Let's so look. Um, if, uh, if I'm just depending on the diagram, without caring about the name, GDE refers to this angle. 
And then when I look at the other triangle, uh, the other figure, I cannot be certain that this angle that I'm looking for corresponds to 18 degrees or 24 degrees. I cannot confirm. Okay, unless I look at the name, because it may not be drawn to scale. But in fact, it is clearly not drawn to scale. So go back to the naming. G D E. So G D E. Follow the pattern. Z W X. Okay, same pattern as Z W X. So Z W X. Okay, this is the angle. So put it down. And that is 18 degrees. Okay? No need to guess. Now let's move on to part B. Find the length of DG. I want to find DG, so I put it in my numerator. I go back to find the corresponding length for DG. DG. WZ. WZ. And it has to be equal to another ratio, another pair of corresponding sides. So we use the small um, figure as our numerator, DG. So we must keep the, in our numerator, they must all belong to the same smaller figure. What options do I have? Only one, DE. No other values given to you already. You have no choice but to use DE. Okay, now go back to find its corresponding side. DE, which is WX. I'm pretty sure WX will be given. WX, yeah, it's given. So let's continue. DG over WZ, W... Z, which is 12, equals to DE, 6 over WX, 18. DG must be one third of 12, which is 4 cm. DG, 4 cm. And now finally, find um, part C, our angle, DGF. DGF. Must be equal to angle WZY. W, Z, Y. Okay, this is the angle that we want to find. So this over here is our uh, four-sided figure. Do you remember the angle sum of a four-sided figure? I you forgot the formula, right? Which some of you may have forgotten the formula. How then do we derive it? I want to find this unknown angle. You can choose to divide this figure into two triangles. So now, this quadrilateral, this four-sided figure, is made up of two triangles. And we know that the sum of angles for a triangle, 18 plus whatever this is, plus whatever this is, is going to give us 180 degrees. And we add that to this, and at 24, and whatever this is, that is another 180, total gives us 360 degrees. So what I'm saying is that all of these angles, when added up, give me 360 degrees, which is the same as your n minus 2 times 180 degrees, if you remember. So now to find the unknown angle, all we need to do is to remove all the other angles that we know, leaving us with 360 minus 18 minus 74 minus 24, giving us the final angle. Okay, so this is equal to 360 minus 18, minus 74, minus 24, and I state a reason, angle sum of quadrilateral. Okay, then figure out the final value itself. That's all. Okay, now um, we move on to practice number six. Two trapeziums, M, N, O, P, W, X, Y, Z, all dimensions in CM are these two trapeziums similar? So let's check it out. Um, to test whether they are similar or not, we are going to find the ratio of all the sides. If there is one pair of um, uh, ratio of the sides that is not the same as the rest, then we can conclude they are not similar already. Okay, let's start with the first one. Let's start with MN. 
Okay, so mn over wx. Let's find out its value. mn, that is 10. wx, 4. So this gives us 5 over 2. You could have cho chosen to use the small figure over the big figure. Doesn't matter. As long as you're consistent. So I've done the first pair already. Let's move on to the next pair. Let's go with um, NO. Okay, so N over here. My 7.5 with XZ. N O over XZ. That is 7.5 over X3. N O XZ. XZ, right? Really? There's something wrong, right? W, X, Y, Z. Okay, uh, there is an error in this diagram. Please change this to W, X, X, Y, Y. Look, the name is M, N, P, O. M, N, O, P. Okay, so... Um, change the name, huh? MNOP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This should be MNOP. Yes, yes. Thank you. Ah, so messy. MNOP. Now it's got MNOP. WXYZ. Okay. So, um, MN over WX. Okay. NO over x y and o over x y okay now it works so 7.5 over 3 that gives us is it 5 over 2 also okay thank you let's move on to the next pair let's go with op op yz or p over yz 5 over 2 okay same and now for the final one i do you think it's going to be the same yes right because it's the same 7.5 and 3 7.5 and 3 okay, so let, let's just finish it up um m p over w z 7.5 over 3 that gives us 5 over 2 Then, we say that since all the ratios are the same, so let's list them now, M, N, W, X, N, O, X, Y, O, P, Y, Z, M, P, W, Z, and all of them are equal to 5 over 2. Since all the ratios of the size are the same, then you stick with the name M, N, O, P, M, N, O, P, similar. To W X Y Z. Ten. Pretty straight. All right. Okay. All right. Next question: Enlargement and reduction. Okay. So, um, a term that we talked about when we were dealing with congruency is what image. So image, uh, just like in a mirror, when you look into a mirror, you see an image. It is like a reflection. It is after the transformation. So we have already learned three types of transformation. Your rotation, just rotate. Um, your translation, moving from one point to the other point, keeping the shape and the size the same. And the last one was reflection. So now we have another type of tra um, transformation. This transformation is known as enlargement and reduction. And I think the name already tells you what to expect. So here we have an enlargement of triangle ABC. It is now enlarged to become DEF. Again, the, the points are corresponding A to D, A and D, B and E, so B and E corresponding points. Then finally, your C and F. So C and F. These are corresponding. So sometimes we might call this A prime, okay? Because it is an image. 
So don't be uh, don't be surprised if you see something like A prime, uh, B prime, and C prime. Know its meaning. Okay, so now our exercise is to find the ratio of the length of the image to the length of the original. So original in the denominator. Ratio uh, image to original. Original in the Not upside down. Uh. Okay, uh, we need to make a change. This should have been DE over AB. Okay, then um, over here, this will be instead of BC, we have EF. Then instead of DF, we have AC. Okay, let's make these changes. And then we fill in the blanks. DE over AB. DE, that will be 8. Over AB, over 2. So this is equal to 4. Then the next one, EF. EF. DE. Wait, did I make a mistake? Oh, 8 over 4, are you? 8 over 4, that is 2. Yes. 8 over 4 is 2. So now, EF over BC. That is 10 over 5, which is 2 again. No surprises, lah. They are similar, ma. So we expect the ratio to be the same. And then the final one, what is over AC? That will be DF. DF over AC, 12 over 6, which is 2. Okay? So in this case, because we are taking a, a bigger number dividing by a smaller number, we end up with a result that is more than 1. Right? Big number divided by a small number, your result is definitely more than 1. In this case, the value is 2. Uh, it happens to be a whole number happens to be an integer. But some other examples could be, after you do a division, maybe it's 2.5, maybe it's 3.6, whatever it is. But it's going to be more than 1. So this ratio is known as the scale factor. You scale it big, it's called an enlargement. What is the scale factor in this case? The scale factor is 2 in this example. So when I tell you the scale factor is 2, in your mind, it must be I make it bigger. The shape did not change, but the size doubled. The scale is 2. From 5 cm, it became 10 cm. 4 cm became 8, 6 became 12. Okay, so the scale factor is the length of the image. This is the result, resulting image over the length of the corresponding side of the object. This is the original. Okay. So here, on the scale factor, which is a constant value, it is constant for an example. Okay, uh, tells us whether the object has been enlarged or um, reduced. So enlarged means bigger, reduced means became smaller. Right, so we move on to the next box. Just focus on the trapezium in the middle. This is the original. Okay, let's move to the right side where we enlarge. So from 6, it became 12. 6 cm, 6 units became 12 units. 4 and 4 units became 8 and 8 units. 3 units became 6 units. Mental sums. Okay, what is the scale factor? What is the scale factor in this case when you enlarge them? 6 became 12, 4 became 8, 3 became 6. But clearly it's 2. Lah. Okay, 2 over 1 or we just call it 2. It is an enlargement. Okay, so um, we fill up the blank on the left side. A prime, B prime over AB. So again, the numerators, they are the images. Image. Denominator will be the original. 
We are always comparing with the original. That's why we put it in the denominator. Just like your percentage change. When you're asked to find percentage increase, percentage decrease, you divide by the original. Same thing over here. Okay? And we get 2. Simply 2. You can write 2 over 1, but after that, you still have to simplify it for it, for it to become 2. Lah. Okay, so you can actually remove this uh, horizontal line over here for the fraction. So now, if you go the other direction, if we make it smaller, what do you expect the result to be? Do you expect it to be a negative number? Since we enlarge, became positive, right? Then maybe reduce should be negative. Could it be? Or since we enlarge, it was more than 1, then when we reduce, it should be less than 1. Which of these cases? Less than 1? Because we are doing a ratio, right? Ratio of the length, and all the lengths are positive. We don't have any negative length. So we are expecting the answer to still be positive, but in this case, the image of 1.5 divided by 3 gives us half. 2 divided by 4, half. 3 divided by 6, half. 2 divided by 4, still half. So our answer over here is half. Okay, so in the diagram above, the scale factor of the reduced image, the ratio, the scale factor will be half. Whereas the scale factor of an enlarged image will be 2 over 1, which is equal to 2. Lah. So how else can we look at this? Okay, we, we just focus on the fraction. This is the image corresponding to one unit. This is the original corresponding to two units. That is what they are saying. Original two units, the new image became one unit only. Two became one, so it got smaller. Whereas, in the next slide, where we have the image, two units, and the original being one unit, original one unit, then it became two units. There is an enlargement. Right? Original is always in the denominator. Image always on top. Must remember. So put it down. Image on top. Original. Uh, maybe we say it's denominator. Lah. So instead of on top, let's change it to its numerator. Okay, now, um, when the scale factor is more than 1, more than 1 means it is an enlargement. When a scale factor is less than 1, it is a reduction. As shown over here, scale factor more than 1 is an enlargement. Whereas a scale factor of less than 1 results in a Reduction. The final part, what happens when the scale factor equals to 1? If it is less than 1, then it's something more than 1 is something. What happens if it is equal to 1? No change, yeah. No change. No change. That is, the two diagrams are Okay, fill in the blank. The two diagrams are what? What goes in the blank? Oh, I'm looking for one word. That has the same meaning as exactly the same. Yeah? Not similar? They are congruent. Okay, they are congruent. Congruent means exactly the same. Same shape, same size. Okay, now, example number four, A, B, C, enlarged to X, Y, Z. Which one is the original, A, B, C or X, Y, Z? Must know lah. A, B, C is the original. We take. Which one is the image, A, B, C or X, Y, Z? Which one is the image?
XYZ. Yes, correct. XYZ is the image because it is the enlarged version of ABC. So if it is enlargement, since you are dealing with scale factor, we expect the scale factor to be more than one. That is what we expect. So if party find the scale factor, okay, let's go ahead and do that. Scale factor. So write down what you're looking for. Scale factor. Um, it is a ratio. It is our, in the numerator, we have the image, the length of the image, divided by the corresponding length of the original. So in our image, we only have one length, which is 9, x, y. To be really complete and to be very clear, you should write x, y, which is 9, over, then you look for the corresponding side, a, b. A, b. That gives us 9 over 3, which is 3. And yes, the scale factor is more than 1, as expected. It is an enlargement. So now we know, every single side you multiply by 3, you will get a new length. So in part B, x, z. x, z, you can use um, our techniques that we have learned previously, which is x, z over the corresponding side. Don't copy it, don't copy it. x, z divided by a, c equals to, and then uh, you have your x, y over your a, b. They can continue with that, no problem. But since we already know, since we already know the scale factor, we can reduce the amount of things that we write. Okay, so let's take a closer look at what this scale factor is. Scale factor is equal to um, length of image over corresponding length of original okay now when i want to find the length of the image which is in part b uh, look i want to find the length of xz xz is my image if i want to find this length of image let us make it a, the subject and this is what we can use from now on length of image it's equal to scale factor times original corresponding length. Okay, we can use this. Whether it is an enlargement or a reduction. When you want to find the result of the enlargement or the reduction, you just take the scale factor times original length. If the scale factor is less than 1, it means it's a reduction. So a value that is less than 1 times another number, but definitely the result is less than the original. So it's a reduction. So we're going to be using this right now. Okay? And we just write x, z equals to 3 times. That is a scale factor. 3 times of the corresponding length. x, z. What is the corresponding length of x, z? a, c. a, c. So we simply have 3 times of 5. 15 um, cm. Okay, length 15 cm. Scale factor, no units. Scale factor, no units. Because it's a ratio. And then part C, angle x, y, z. When you do an enlargement or reduction, angle do not change. The angles do not change. So angle x, y, z remains the same um, as angle a, b, c, which is 115 degrees. And now your homework is to um, finish this set of notes. Okay, you got one, two, three, four questions. Do you have these textbook questions? Do you have the textbook questions at the bottom? F? Okay, um, so this will be until practice 8 due on 31st March, whereas the textbook question will be due um, 1st April.